What's the best voltage and frequency? This question comes from David in New York City, and David writes, Hey Paul, from a sound quality or manufacturing point of view, is there any advantages or disadvantages to 230 volts, 50 hertz power over 120 volts, 60 hertz power? If you could magically change the power standard in the USA, would you choose something other than 120 volts at 60 hertz? That's a good question. And the answer is yes, I would. If, if we go back a little bit and review our reasons uh, for AC, I want to just briefly go over that for people that don't really understand what's going on. So when we, when we talk about AC voltage, something, let's just take the USA for a moment, and we say it's 120 volts at 60 hertz. What that means is that there is a sine wave, that, and a sine wave is simply a representation of a voltage that is moving from uh, zero volts, no volts, up to a certain level in a very smooth fashion, and then back down again to zero, and then from there to uh, a, a negative voltage and back up again. So it's going from plus to minus, plus to minus in a very smooth sinusoidal waveform. And, and, and that means that it's doing so in a way that is not jittery or with what we would refer to as harmonics. It, does, it, it goes at a very steady uh, rate that is always one frequency. If we start adding more frequencies to the same thing, then we get harmonics, and, but, but we won't go into that. So anyway, it's just imagine that we had a battery that we could flip from plus to minus, plus to minus, and everywhere in between as we flip it. That's a sine wave, and that's what's coming out of your wall. Now, in the United States, that happens 60 times a second, hence 60 hertz in the... European nations and actually most of the world, it happens 50 times a second. And there's a great story that, that I don't really remember too much, but um, it, it had to do with Nikola Tesla. And he, he had a thing for threes. Everything had to be in, in, in complements of threes. So when he built the U.S. system of AC power, uh, Tesla, you know, couldn't stand to have something that wasn't a, a multiple of three, so that's how we got 60 hertz, and the rest of the world didn't really have such a fetish about three, so they, they had 50. The ultimate and ideal frequency, in my opinion, would be an even higher one. So let me explain what that is. Years ago, in the late 1990s, uh, yeah, late 1990s, 1997 or so, I invented essentially this thing, which is what we call today, it's called a power plant. But back then, we didn't even have a name for it. And what I had done, well, the goal of a power plant is to take that AC that's coming out of the wall, convert it, get rid of all that AC-ness, and convert it to a battery voltage, DC, so it's just plus and just uh, minus, and it's steady. And then I'm going to regenerate new AC that's better than the old because the old can have, it can be misshapen, the top of it can, the top of the sine wave, instead of reaching as high as we want, can be lopped off uh, and so you don't get the full charge that you need. So a power plant takes care of all those things, right? And it regenerates new, perfect, low distortion sine waves that's regulated and very low impedance, which is its key. So this is a P20, and it does the same thing, right? Now, in my research, when we first started doing this, I had essentially a sine wave generator hooked up to a power, uh, power amplifier. And when my friend Peter Rudy and I uh, were first designing this thing, we would turn the sine wave generator to 60 hertz, and the power amp would output the 60 hertz. We'd plug our equipment into the power amp, and that became the basis of the power amp, or the power plant. And that's essentially what this is, right? It's a power amplifier, a very powerful big one, with a sine wave generator inside. When we did our experiments, 
I could turn the frequency up at will and then we could listen to the stereo to see if it sounded better. And as I turned up the frequency, the sound became glorious and up to about 400 hertz. Now, there were some problems. The higher the frequency, the, the worse the bass, but the top end and the mid-range were just spectacular. And I found that about 400 hertz was the very best frequency. Now, there's a couple of, of good things. So let's imagine that the, the US listened to me. <laughs> It'd be a very different place. Um, but if they listened to me and they changed everything over to 400 hertz, well, you know the big transformers that you see? That would go down dramatically because the higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer. And the opposite is true. So transformers in Europe are, are 10, 20% bigger than transformers need to be in the US. And um, very small transformers happen when you have higher frequencies. So a 400 hertz transformer is, is, very, uh, is very small relative to a 60 hertz. So we would save a whole bunch of copper and iron by having 400 hertz transformers. It would be more efficient to send it. There'd be a hundred different reasons you'd want to do it. But no one's going to listen to me, and I don't, I don't get that, that privilege. Now, why don't these put out 400 hertz? Well, part of the problem was that when designers, especially tube designers, design their equipment, they're not thinking 400 hertz, they're thinking 60 or 50, right? So we ran into trouble, especially with tube equipment, because a lot of the heaters in the tubes uh, run directly off of the AC. And so we heard this, Boop! this 400 hertz signal came in. So it didn't work with everything. But when it did work, it was amazing. So thanks for the question. It was a really good one. I appreciate it. Bye.